Hi there, today I'm going to be finishing off the middle carriage of my Wessex Electric. Since the last build video, I've made a couple of design changes to the model. Um, firstly, um, I wanted to reduce its overall height uh, to make it more in keeping with the standard LEGO City trains that LEGO themselves make. So I'm going to remove the uh, curved slopes that we've been putting on the roof, which will reduce the roof by two plates, and also this black line I was having underneath the uh, curved side before we got to the wheel sets. We're going to remove that as well, so that will give us three plates uh, in height reduced by, but I'm am going to actually add one more plate back on top to give it a bit of detailing on the roof uh, but more of that later um, so we're going to gain a plate on the roof and we're going to gain a plate underneath so the whole height will be reduced by two plates so first thing we're going to do is get rid of all this old roofing which we're not going to be using anymore get rid of all that um, and get rid of the corridor connectors this is the other change. I made originally made the corridor connectors in uh, Lego's dark grey colour, and I'm going to change that to black now, so I don't need these at all. So I'm going to put them to one side as well. Um, we're going to take off this side. Here about there. Then we're going to take off this side as well. And we can get rid of all this, because I'm also going to build the base of the train in black now, just to make it more in keeping with the wheel sets that sit just below it. So we're going to have a black base and held that together with some white plates which will run down the middle of the inside of the carriage. There we go, there's our new base. Uh, the other thing I need to do is add a few more of these uh, angle brackets on the side. So if I remove that one, we can add in another angle bracket there. And remove that one. And add in another one there. There's our side, and the reason for that will become apparent a little bit later. Uh, then we'll do the same to this side as well. We're going to remove that one. In fact, if I attach that first, it might be easier. Remove the top. There we go, remove those two. Add in two more brackets. We'll put these back on for now, although they will come off again later on. Um, if you watched the last build video, you may also remember that I had to make the red line uh, two plates wide because there's nothing on the outside for studs to attach to. There's only this line, uh, one stud in. Um, so we're going to actually improve the strength of that as well. You can get rid of these. And I've got a lot more red 2x8 plates, which is going to give us a much more stable base for the sides of the coach. So that's that, and then this one can happily sit back there, like that. And then these are no longer needed. And we've got two more red 1x4 plates to go there ready for the next wall, which we will now build. So first of all we need our, our white layer. So some 1x8s there. Then our blue layer is slightly in, so we have one stud left at the end for our one by one brick pillars at each end. So there's our blue layer. Now at this point you'll see on the previous one, I'll turn it around, oops, um, we had two 
blue layers of plates before we got to the blue layer of tiles. So there's three layers here. And I thought another way to reduce the height would be get rid of one of those. But then I realized the reason I did it the whole blue layer three bricks high is when we get to the um, driving vans at the end, we need the blue inverted slopes and then the white slopes for the angle where the livery um, sort of changes angle um, and those are obviously three bricks high so I can't reduce the height of the blue it needs to stay as three bricks high so that's fine we then have another blue layer in that case which goes there and then because this layer of windows is built on its sides we, the third layer can't have studs on top so we have to use tiles for that so let's just line those up it goes there and there's our line of smooth tiles so next we need to build this set of windows across and all that is is uh, the two by one pa uh, panels um, with one by two blue plates between them so there's seven of those with seven blue plates but however on this end what we do is we put a one by one tile and then a one by one plate which marries up with this pillar now this is pillar is just a one by one brick and a one by one technic brick with a hole so that stud happily sits in that pillar like that and then the other end we have another one by one brick and a one by one brick with a stud on the side so we put those two together and they happily sit on there like that straighten those bricks up and then this whole set can just sit on top quite happily so nearly all of it is studs on the side apart from the two pillars holding it together so then we need to add our windows which of course represent the door window and then the toilet window and then our one by one bricks three of them to make a pillar at each end and finally another blue layer to hold everything together and the middle one won't get held in place until we put our final white layer on like so and then lastly for the side we have our red layer and we've got our second wall complete so we'll spin this one round if we attach these two red plates to each end We've now got both walls complete. One idea I was considering was getting some 2x6 blue plates and putting it across ways. So take out this plate here and the corresponding one the other side and put it across to brace the windows in the middle. But actually they, they flex ever so slightly but not too much and I don't think, unless it gets really bashed by something they're going to stay fairly stable so I don't think they're going to need any um, extra support holding them together um, in the middle especially as the roof will hold it together just above so it was a good idea but I don't think it's going to be necessary so next is the corridor connectors now like I said we're changing from grey to black and I'm using these uh, black profile bricks so they have a, a vertical fluting on one side and horizontal fluting 
are on the other side. So they need to be this way round to represent the sort of the concertina effect on the corridor connectors. So we're going to build one of those, five of those on each side. Like that. Um, and we want to raise it one so we put a white one underneath it. And just get one of these curved bricks, put a plate in the top to give it a curved roof. And there's our corridor connector. Now that can sit on there. Perfect. And then this is the same height as the red, so it's going to tie in with the roof well. So that's that one. And then here's my second one, which can just sit on the other end, like that. Then I said the roof was changing, so we had those regular sloped 45 degree bricks. And I realised LEGO City sometimes use these for their trains. Um, they use them in their most recent passenger train, this one in yellow um, and also they use these modified tiles and regular tiles along the top so from that i've got the idea of using these but the uh, one of the distinctive features of the um, wessex electric is it has these ridges all the way along the roof so i thought if we not just on the edges but if we covered the entire roof with those like this it would give a good impression of those ridges that the Wessex Electric has. So you can put these on and here are the other ones I've already made. And there they're starting to look almost finished. Looking pretty good. So the only thing it needs now is some wheels. So we have a set of parts here. Now a lot of uh, Lego City trains use these pre-made wheel sets which you can see. So the wheels are attached with a metal axle and sits in these carriers. Um, that is true for lots of the coaches, but for the driving trains, you get the power function motors. And to replicate those, you can get these decorative side panels. So because I'm going to have a power function motor in the front, I wanted all the wheel sets to look the same. So we're going to build up some wheel sets using some Technic bricks, like that, with some plates on top. like so and then using these the uh, Lego City wheels but with the axle hole in and some six long axles they can make up the wheel sets so there's one there we get another one So there's a, our first wheel set. Now the decorative sides sit on there, but they do need to be raised another plate. So we've just got some one by two plates to go in each corner. Then they can slip over the top on each side. And that is the same size and shape as a regular power functions motor. Now you can see also there's a gap straight through the middle here where those Technic axle holes are. So we need to get a 2x4 brick, put that in the middle underneath. And that just blocks up those holes. So next we need some buffers and a, a buffer connector. And that, let's just pop that on a plate at one end. And instead of using the regular city bogey plates uh, like it we have here, which are a plate hide then with a Technic pin on top, I'm just using a regular 2x2 two two turntable. So 
we're going to pop that on the 2x2 two two plate and put that right in the middle. There you go. So when you've got two of these, they can go underneath our train. Now the extra uh, brackets I put underneath these side panels, this is where we need to they, uh, show what those were for. So we're going to pop those two off again. And when this sits on top of the wheel sets, um, the Wessex Electric also had where the, where the curved tumble home happened here, above the um, suspension unit in the middle of the wheel set, the Wessex Electric doesn't curve, it goes flat. So what I've done here, I've got some 2 by one curved slopes. And if we add a 1 by one plate under each one, they are then the same profile as the 2x4s. So we're going to move the wheels out of the way and what we'll do is add one of those to each side like this. Oops. Like that, and then for the flat bit, if we put some two by two plates and then some two by two smooth tiles, you can see the effect that has. So this all curves in, and then these bits are flat on the sides. So we'll just do that to the other side as well. We can pop these plates off. Add the one by two slopes. On each side and then a plate and a tile in the middle. And the last one, one by two curved slope, one by two curved slope and a plate and a tile. Now those should marry up exactly with where the suspension unit sits, so they're right in the middle of the wheel set, which is perfect. And get the other set, line them up. Oh, spun around slightly. There. And there we have it, the completed Wessex Electric coach. I just grab some track. You could pop it on there. Looks pretty good. And just for comparison, here's that Lego City train. So the couplings are the same height and the wheel sets the same height. And all in all, this is, I think, one plate higher than a regular Lego City train would be. But I'm very happy with that. It's a bit longer as well, so all in all, just a bit more chunky than a Lego City one would be. So, there you have it. The next build video will be prototyping the uh, cabs uh, to go at the end. Um, each end will follow the same pattern, mostly down to about here. Then the livery slopes up and we have that very distinctive yellow end. Um, so we're prototyping that. Please do comment, subscribe, like the video, especially comment. I'd be very interested to hear what anyone thinks, if there's any suggestions you might have of things I could do to improve this. Um, but other than that, I'll look forward to making the next video.